Alright, so I want to talk about Nintendo Switch Sports, and let me just start out by saying that Nintendo Switch Sports is actually not that bad. It's definitely not perfect or without any flaws, and trust me, we'll get to those flaws, but overall it's pretty good, and at the very least, it's passable for what it is. Now, ever since the announcement of Nintendo Switch Sports, I have been very critical of it for many different reasons. However, I still tried to remain open-minded about the game all the way up until I got to play it and experience the game for myself. And although I was very skeptical and critical about the game, that didn't stop me from going all in on its release. I bought Nintendo Switch Sports about a week after launch or so, and I opted to go for the physical release of the game that came with the bundle with the Joy-Con leg strap for an extra $10 rather than the digital edition for the game that was a bit cheaper. Two reasons for this. First, I wanted to have the physical edition of the game as well as the accessory. Second, I'm pretty sure something is wrong with my brain and any time a game comes in a box, I just need it. I just think it's neat. Oh, but that's not all. Not only do I have the physical game and accessory, I also have a video game aisle display to showcase the game's release to shoppers. Now why do I have this, you may be asking? I don't know. Good question. Nintendo Switch Sports is a game that released. That, I can say for certain. But not only did it release, but it released in April of this year. Isn't that just so fascinating? At launch and as of now, there are six sports available to come, with the promise that a last one and maybe even more will come in the form of a free update. Half of the sports are returning sports, and after the free update, that will change to over half of the sports being returning sports. Those being bowling, tennis, swordplay, or as they're calling it now, chambara, and lastly golf, with golf being the free update that is promised to come later. The newer sports that they added are badminton, volleyball, and soccer. Overall, not a terrible lineup, is what I would be saying if this was 2006. So I don't really want to be that guy that's griping at the number of sports being so low since each sport is really well done and polished for the most part. But come on, Nintendo! The original Wii Sports game had five sports each with multiple subcategories to play, and Nintendo Switch Sports only has seven sports with four being returning and bowling having the only legit subcategory to play. It just feels like a rushed game that they threw together to have something on the market going into the summer months. After 16 years, you'd think there would be more sports, or at the very least, more sports variety. This is and will always be my biggest complaint against the game. The fact that Nintendo Switch Sports only has 7 sports is massively disappointing. And I keep saying 7, but as of now it is only 6 because that free update is yet to release. Yeah, but okay. Maybe only having 7 sports isn't actually that bad after all, if they all play unique and feel differently from each other. They don't! Tennis is essentially in this game 3 different times. That's basically half of the package. You obviously have tennis in the game, but then you have badminton, which is barely any different than playing tennis. And then you have volleyball, and I'm gonna say something a bit controversial, but volleyball is almost identical to playing tennis as well, it's just a bit slower and you swing up instead of sideways. This was something that I noticed in trailers, and I had hoped and hoped that when it came down to actually playing these games they would feel different enough, but besides a few small differences, they all almost feel identical to each other. It really comes down to just picking which one of these you like the most and sticking to that. I personally prefer tennis, so I almost never go out of my way to play badminton. Now, I will say I do play volleyball from time to time, but I always find my way back to tennis in the end of it. And it really wouldn't be that big of an issue that all these sports play very similar to each other if it wasn't making up half of the package. That is really where I have the most issue with these sports. Thankfully, however, the other sports in the collection do feel different enough from each other to give off more of a unique feeling to each. Alright, before diving into the sports and talking about those, I want to discuss Spoko Square and the Sports Mates because they are a huge component of the game aside from the sports. Long gone is Woohoo Island in favor of Spoko Square. I don't really know how I feel about Spoko Square. Objectively, it's way worse than Woohoo Island. I don't think anyone will try and say otherwise. But while I'm sad that we did not get the return of Woohoo Island, that is not to say I don't actually like Spoko Square. Actually, let me start out by complimenting Spoko Square and say that it looks really nice. The areas look well thought out as a place people would actually hang out and they feel well occupied. My real problem with Spoko Square is just how generic and borderline unfitting it all is. I personally see Spoko Square more as a large shopping area and not a place to play sports, which is a big problem when you are in a sports game. It is weird to be playing swordplay and see people reading books at the library or bookstore behind the arena. You bowl just in the middle of a bunch of shops and escalators. These don't really feel like sporting facilities like how the buildings on Woohoo Island did, and like I said, these locations also just feel generic. They look nice and well occupied, I'll give them that, but it's like they just picked out a style and ran with it the entire game without really exploring much. 
Each area feels so aesthetically similar to each other with very few distinctions. You don't really think about this while playing the game, but it is important to mention because this does overall affect my opinion on the game. Now, the sports mates were something that I initially hated so much. When I first saw them, I despised everything about them. They looked like a generic avatar from an early 2000s online chat room game. They still do look like that, but I've grown to like them a bit more. Now, don't get me wrong, I still much, much, much more prefer the me characters, but after playing and unlocking some more cosmetics for the sports mate, I've come to accept them and admittedly start to like them a bit. I don't like how much customization of the sports mates is locked behind random rewards in the online component of the game, but they aren't as bad as I initially had them out to be. But finally, we can move on to the sports, the bread and butter of Nintendo Switch Sports. I would sure hope so since this is once again a sporting game. Each sport can be accessed from the menu showing you the locations around Spoko Square, and I know I just got done talking about Spoko Square, but this just makes me wish there was a free roaming option. I'm not the first person to say this, but it would just be so nice to just run around Spoko Square and go to the sports that way. Obviously the menu is the best way to get to the sports for convenience, but there's already a walking and running mechanic in the game from soccer, so why not just model out the entirety of Spoko Square? Also, there are these traveler tips in between loading screens that literally give lore and world building to Spoko Square. It just feels like such a missed opportunity that we don't really get to explore this place, especially since it's replacing Woohoo Island, an already much, much more iconic location. But I digress. From the Spoko Square menu, you can select from the not so wide range of sports. I'm going to start with going over the returning sports first, and then go into the new sports that are added to Nintendo Switch Sports, starting with tennis. Tennis probably has to be my favorite sport in the Wii Sports series across all the games. I don't like it in Nintendo Switch Sports. First off, let me just say that this is a problem across all of the sports in this collection, and not just tennis, but the Joy-Cons are simply just not as good as the Wiimote in terms of motion capabilities. I have issues with motion desync all the time during these sports, and the motion controls will rarely feel smooth and seamless. So with that said, tennis for the most part plays pretty well with minor controller issues, the biggest problem I run into with tennis is just that my shot will sometimes not properly register the way I wanted it to, but overall, tennis is a pretty okay game. There are three different courts to play on, but it's random which one you get, and depending on the court, that changes how your ball acts. Some courts make it bouncier, and some courts make it less bouncy. I like this for variety, but I also do not like this because I'll get used to how one court plays, and then it'll change and it's like the whole game has changed. But, other than the different courts, this plays exactly how you would come to expect a Wii Sports Tennis game to play. Similarly, bowling is also played how you would always expect it to. This game is where I've had the most issues with motion controls, and they actually ruin the game when this happens. I don't know what it is, but sometimes it will just not register that I rolled the ball. It doesn't always happen, and it doesn't happen frequently enough, but when it does, it can absolutely ruin an entire game. I'll go through the entire motion of swinging my arm, but my character will just sit there holding the ball out over the lane and not throwing it. This can completely throw you out of the running in an online portion of the game, and it's really frustrating when it happens. So speaking of the online, the way bowling is played online is in a battle royale style where only the top players get to make it to the next round until there is overall a winner. I actually really like this, and it's really fun to practice and improve so you can stay in the top rankings each round. Really, my only complaint is that if you lose out, it's really annoying and it's a huge time waste, although you do get lots of experience still, so I guess it's not a total loss. Bowling is also the only game to have a subcategory to play, and that's a mode to practice spin control. It's something that was present in the older games, and I'm really glad we got to see it return in Switch Sports, because it is really fun, and a lot of the lanes can be so crazy that it's actually a challenge to see how many pins you can knock down. Overall, putting in the occasional motion control issues aside, I really enjoy bowling, and it is probably my favorite sport out of the package. The last returning sport that's in the game as of now is Swordplay, now known as Chumbara. I absolutely hate this game mode. They completely butchered it from how it played in Wii Sports Resort. Maybe I'm just really bad at the game, but it never feels like I can properly block an attack, and the game overall just feels much slower to me. There are three different playstyles, but none of them really feel that good to me. I pretty much stick with the default sword for the most part. I barely touch this game just from how bad it is. This could just be a me thing having an unpopular opinion, but Champara is the worst thing in this package. By a long shot. Terrible in every way possible in my opinion. But hey, if you like this sport, don't let me stop you from enjoying it. Alright, so moving on to the new sports that were added, I want to get badminton out of the way. This, to me, is just a poor substitute for tennis. 
I think the sport plays good and I will say that I feel there is a bit more control over where you want the birdie to go rather than the tennis ball on tennis, but I have multiple issues with this sport. Firstly, unlike real life where badminton and tennis play very differently, in Nintendo Switch sports they play and feel near identically to each other. Just swing to make the thing go over the net. In my opinion, that makes one of these sports redundant and should have been left out of the package. But besides it being too similar to tennis, my other complaints are just that how boring and easy the game is to play. Rallies go on for way too long making this game drag out. And I cannot talk about Switch Sports Badminton without mentioning the diving mechanic. This, above all else, completely ruins the game for me. I hate when I feel like I should have easily been able to hit the birdie or the sidestep to reach it like in tennis, but instead my character just flops onto the floor to hit the birdie and it takes so long to get back up that it's just a free point for the opponent. I'd honestly rather my character just whiff it and lose the point right then and there rather than diving onto the floor and getting embarrassed like that. Overall, I just think that badminton could have easily been excluded from the Switch sports and it wouldn't have been anything substantial missing but getting to move on to a new game that I actually do enjoy, Volleyball. Now, this is just another tennis clone to me, although it is different enough to where it sort of gets a pass, but I do enjoy the cooperative effort that it takes to play this game. Unlike in tennis, where if you don't have a partner it just duplicates your character, you actually have to play volleyball with someone else on your side. The timing can be a bit tricky to hit shots, and it takes a bit to get used to, but in my opinion, this is the best sport that rewards you for getting better and practicing. Volleyball also handles really well compared to some of the other sports, but other than that, I don't really have much to say about volleyball other than it's a solid sport and one of my favorites in Switch sports. Lastly is soccer. I was really excited about soccer when I saw it in the trailers. It looked like Wii Sports take on Rocket League, and as horrible as an idea as that seems, it actually looked really fun. But in reality, this is probably the most boring sport to play, at least in my opinion. The matches I've played so far have just been me standing back as goalie waiting for the ball to come my way, or me just aimlessly running around trying to be helpful where I can be. Maybe this is just my playstyle ruining the game for me, but as of now, I have not really enjoyed soccer as much as I had hoped to. But I do come back to the game every so often, just to give the sport another shot. I can say for certain that when there is actually action going on, it is really fun and super competitive. When everyone gets clumped up around your goal and they're trying to score on you, it is really intense trying to prevent that from happening, and vice versa, when you're all clumped up on the opponent's team trying to score, it is really exciting trying to get your ball in their goal. But yeah, that's all the current games in this package. Like I've said, golf is yet to be added, but I feel like it is safe to assume it will be very similar to how golf plays in the other Wii Sports games. Simple, yet solid. I'd be surprised if they found a way to mess golf up. But at the same time, I wouldn't put it past Nintendo to mess something up like that. Now, I mean, to an extent, they already kinda have messed it up by making it a free update to come later, but take that as you will. Now, a big thing about Nintendo Switch Sports that I had kinda alluded to earlier but not heavily focused on is the online component of the game. This is something that Wii Sports Club had and experimented with, and I was really excited to see it return for this game. It is really fun to get to play these classic sports and new sports with other people online and work your way up through the ranks and play against better and better opponents. My real complaints about this are that all of the progress and unlockables are hidden behind this online component. Playing offline or single player mode gets you next to nothing. This sucks because you have to be subscribed to Nintendo Switch Online services to play online in Switch Sports. Now I'm already subscribed to this because I'm a slave to Nintendo and must buy everything they offer. But not everyone may have this service or even be able to afford it, meaning that some people may not even be able to experience Nintendo Switch Sports to its fullest. So that's my opinion about the game for the most part. I think it's pretty solid, but it has some flaws that are hard to overlook. But maybe I'm just in the minority. Perhaps I've been way too critical of this game ever since its announcement, and I have indirectly biased myself against it. Maybe other people love this game, and it has secretly been the smash hit game of the summer. Yeah, it's not. This game is beyond dead already, hardly anyone talks about it or plays it, and I'm already seeing tons of copies of it just rotting on video game store shelves. I don't exactly know why this is, since there was a lot of hype around the game building up to release and a ton of people jumped in on the first week or so, but it just died out. My main theory is that the game just wasn't what people expected it to be, and thus in the end, feeling lackluster to many players. Also, the feeling that the game is just not finished and was rushed out isn't helping that either. 
Whatever the cause may be, I hope it is a sign to Nintendo that they cannot just push out any game regardless of the nostalgia factor attached to it. I hope and wish for them to put the most effort they can into their games like I and many fans know they are capable of doing. But hey, I still bought this game at launch, so uh, who am I to really say anything? Thank <laughs> you.